What's up, all my Instrument Minute peeps? This is Taiwan Hubbard, and I'm here to do a research update for you guys. I think this study is pretty cool, um, and I wanted to touch on it because I think it has pretty big implications when it comes to uh, moving hydrogen research forward, uh, and uh, especially when it comes to the disease model we're going to be looking at today, which is diabetes. And so in this study today, they actually use hydrogen inhalation for a diabetes model. And we're going to go ahead and walk through this study. So let's get into some of the details and the findings because I think it's going to be pretty, uh, I think you guys are going to be excited about some of these findings. So let's do it. Okay, so first things first, let's go ahead and read the title of this study. Uh, this study is titled Effectiveness and Safety of Hydrogen Inhalation as a Adjunctive Treatment in Chinese Type 2 Diabetes Patients, a Retrospective Observational Double Arm Real Life Clinical Study. Um, and so, uh, based on the title, uh, it kind of gives you some indication what the study is going to be about. So, one, this is a human study uh, with type 2 diabetes patients. And in fact, it's actually a lot of patients. It's, it's over a thousand patients that were actually uh, in this study. And it's in a real life clinical scenario. So, these patients were at a hospital breathing hydrogen gas. Uh, and so, that's one thing that's pretty cool about the study. Also, um, this is not a study where the investigators or the researchers are going to be intervening. They're actually looking back on data that was collected about these patients and put this study together. And so they had no involvement in um, uh, interacting with these patients. They're looking at medical data, uh, data from these patients who were breathing hydrogen gas and comparing it to the control who was doing other interventions for diabetes and so that's kind of what this means that's what the retrospectives mean this is what the observational uh, means and then the double arm means that one uh, group is going to be it's, it's it's actually two arms or two groups within the study one arm is going to be the hydrogen inhalation the other arm is going to be uh, the control group and so that's what that means and then the real life clinical study means that this was done in a clinical setting which which is pretty cool um, when you actually think about it. So as the title of the study states, they use hydrogen inhalation therapy for this study. Uh, that is the administration method used. And interestingly enough, they use a really low flow rate, uh, which was 50 milliliters per minute of pure H2. Um, and, you know, basically if you try to do all the numbers and crunch this, uh, what that equates to would be for an average male human. This is probably around a half a percent of hydrogen gas being administered with the inhale inhaled air uh, to be therapeutic for you. So we've we've kind of talked about this in um, our videos on instrumentals. We have a video on hydrogen inhalation where we talk and state that basically, by and large, by the you know, clinical research on hydrogen, one to four percent of the inhaled air that we breathe to be therapeutic, one to four percent of that needs to be hydrogen gas. Uh, and I actually have some studies that suggest 0.5% may be therapeutic. So you can get a little lower than 1% that might still induce a therapeutic effect. And so I say all this to say they use a really low uh, concentration and it seemed to have um, some therapeutic effects or drastic therapeutic effects. And this makes me want to highlight um, something that's interesting about hydrogen gas as a therapeutic agent. Uh, and so how hydrogen functions in our bodies is it is a signaling molecule. And so uh, because it's a signaling molecule, as long as you get above the kind of minimum amount that's needed to induce the signal, right, to induce these signals or, uh, or to regulate these me metabolic pathways, you will induce an effect. And so um, although it was a, a very low flow rate, um, and probably a low overall concentration being administered to these patients is clearly enough to induce a therapeutic effect in um, a vast amount of these patients. And so this is something that um, needs to be understood because, you know, the question could be, well, if they use 50 milliliters per minute and it was only a half a percent of H2 that was being administered to these patients or somewhere around there, right? Um, it's going to differ between different people. But if it's somewhere around a half a percent of hydrogen gas is being administered to these patients, then why do I need a higher flow rate? And so what you need to understand is that this could have been, they could have been administering uh, enough of the gas to induce a therapeutic effect, but 
doesn't mean that administering a higher level might not have induced greater effects. Because we do see that in scientific literature as well. Hydrogen does seem to be dose dependent in many different disease models, meaning that if you get a greater dose, you have a greater effect. And so um, this is possible as well. Uh, and so this means that um, um, that this level was enough to induce a therapeutic effect and that we need to recognize that that a low concentration of hydrogen can be can be therapeutic as well. Uh, we actually talk about this in my sister company, HU Hub, uh, where we have performance standards for hydrogen products. With my company, uh, we actually have a minimum standard for portable inhalation systems for breathing. And our minimum standard uh, is at 50 milliliters per minute. Uh, and so this matches with this data, which is pretty cool to actually see it in real life that our performance standards based on the scientific literature matches with the data. You also, here's a couple studies um, showing the 0.5% uh, that has been administered before and has induced therapeutic effects. And so uh, that is a way for us to think about this. Next, we go, next we're going to get into some of the details of this study and uh, cover some of the findings that they found because I think it's pretty remarkable. One thing before we move on, I probably should clarify that I couldn't find within the study if they use a nasal cannula or if they use a sealed like oxygen mask or whatever type of mask they use to breathe. And so considering that, you know, um, if they were using a mask, 50 milliliters per minute might look differently. It might not be as low as 0.5%. Maybe it could have been 1% or something along those lines. So um, it just kind of really depends. Uh, they didn't specify. Uh, and then... Uh, at least, well, I didn't, I didn't read it in the study, at least. Uh, and then, secondly, I would also mention that these patients breathe hydrogen gas for 25 hours per week. Um, that's, that's quite a bit if you break it down. I mean, they're, they're breathing for a couple hours a day, uh, which, is, which, is, which is great. This, this kind of matches up with, with the studies already, which you know I state in other um, videos of ours that Typically, two to four hours per day is typically what's seen throughout the scientific literature of hydrogen's uh, inhalation's duration. You know, it could be as low as 30 minute session, uh, but up as, you know, or, you know, eight hours per day. But m most times throughout the literature, from what I've seen, two to four hours per day of hydrogen inhalation uh, appears to be therapeutic, like that duration or session time frame. And so that's what look like with what these patients are also doing. And uh, so let's move into some of the things that they looked at and some of the findings. All right, so the researchers looked at seven different parameters um, or data points uh, to examine hydrogen's effects in these type 2 diabetes patients. And uh, I'm going to just go over the seven. Um, first one would be glycemic control, um, basically um, seeing how their body manages sugar. Uh, the fasting plasma glucose. Uh, lipid profile, so they so actually looked at total cholesterol levels. They looked at insulin resistance. Um, they looked at uh, beta cell function, so uh, the cells that produce insulin, uh, how well they were functioning, and then and then they looked at the HbA1c uh, target achievement. So basically, um, if these patients were able to reach uh, the target, uh, you know, HbA1c uh, level, uh, which is I think less than seven percent. Um, by the end of the study. And then they looked at uh, safety. They looked at um, if hydrogen induced any um, adverse effects or if hydrogen was able to prevent any adverse effects from just having diabetes. And look at the safety profile of uh, hydrogen. And these were the seven different uh, data points or parameters that they were um, looking over and analyzing. And sure enough, hydrogen had a, a great result. Uh, and so we're just going to go through some of these key findings. And so uh, the hydrogen inhalation group uh, that were breathing hydrogen grass had a greater improvement in uh, glycemic control. Uh, and uh, after six, mo six months of treatment, which I should have said this earlier within this, but they breathe hydrogen gas for six months. 25 hours per week for six months equaled these type of results. And then um, uh, the hydrogen inhalation group also had a more significant reduction in fasting plasma glucose levels uh, and then it also improved the total uh, cholesterol it improved insulin resistance it improved the beta cell function 
and the patients were that were in the hydrogen inhalation group uh, were able to achieve the HbA1c target uh, level uh, better than the control group. So, and oh, I should say lastly, in hydrogens, hydrogen uh, improve uh, the safety profile of hydrogen. It, the patients were well tolerated; they didn't they didn't have really any adverse effects to hydrogen, uh, and it had uh, it was way better than the control group and the adverse effects that they had with the medication or the intervention they were taking. So, hydrogen basically improve all these parameters and even even you know cause some of these patients to lose weight and and everything after six months uh, you know altering body composition and stuff too for these patients which is pretty cool like they just breathe hydrogen gas and they're losing weight uh, and uh, improving um, their bodies uh, the disease model of diabetes so I could have ended this video with just that and it's telling you these are the findings and that hydrogen inhalation is also good for diabetes uh, because many of the studies is with hydrogen water and diabetes and say, well, see, hydrogen inhalation can benefit diabetes as well. I could have ended the study. Uh, I could have ended this video with just stating that. But um, I went a step further and uh, wanted to translate some of this information uh, so that you guys can understand the significance of the studies, this study and the findings. And so I decided to go through, look at these seven different data points and look at the metrics or the actual data that they, they got. So looking at the fasting glucose and seeing what hydrogen did in six months to these patients and seeing what, seeing what the control group did and or with the lipids, you know, uh, looking, at their, looking at the total cholesterol in their blood, uh, you know, at the beginning and looking at the control and seeing how hydrogen reduced it. And, and I converted all of these things into percentages so you can actually see the significance and understand the significance of the findings of this study or how hydrogen was able to improve these, these patients. So let's go over some of these percentages and I think it's gonna blow your minds. All right, so let's go ahead and we're just gonna do these one by one. We're gonna start with fasting plasma glu glucose. And after you crunch the numbers, in six months, Hydrogen inhalation was able to improve fasting plasma glucose by approximately 94.02% more so than the control group, which is pretty remarkable. Uh, in the When it comes to total cholesterol, in the six months period, hydrogen inhalation was able to improve total cholesterol by approximately 193.18% compared to the control. So they would improve this by that percentage. Um, insulin resistance. Hydrogen inhalation improved insulin resistance by approximately 347% compared to the control group in six month period of time. Uh, beta cell function, the cells that actually produce insulin in, in the pancreas. Hydrogen was able Hydrogen inhalation was able to improve beta cell function by 314% compared to the control group. And the target, uh, the target HbA1c level, right, to get to that less than 7%, which is good or the target for diabetes. I think like a normal human is somewhere between like five or six. Um, but the target that achieving this target by the end of the study. Hydrogen inhalation, um, based on these numbers, it indicates that it was 172% more likely, the patients were 172% more likely to hit the HbA1c target level of less than 7% compared to the control group. Um, and for all the adverse events that can be associated with the treatments for these patients, whether that is hypoglycemia, uh, Hypoglycemia, which is too low of blood sugar, vomiting or constipations or 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 or, or dizziness and these type of things. Um, hydrogen, uh, uh, when it came to the adverse events, hydrogen um, was better. <laughs> I don't know the way to say it besides hydrogen had significantly the people who are on hydrogen had significantly less adverse events uh, than the people that were in the control group, and so. Just in summary, I want you to I want to, I want to say this just rapid fire in summary. Fasting plasma glucose 94%, total cholesterol 193%, uh, 
insulin resistance, 347%, beta cell function, 314%, the HbA1c target level was able to be reached. It was more likely to be reached by 172%. These are big, big numbers. And so it's really impressive um, when you think about it uh, as a treatment. So at the end of the study, that's what they said. Hydrogen seems to be well-tolerated and effective treatment for diabetes. And, uh, and so I want to do a research update on this and let you all know. Um, and I hope those numbers, me crunching those numbers, were impressive for you. Uh, it, was, it was for me as well. Um, we'll be doing more research update videos uh, in the future. There's so many different studies that come out uh, that, I mean, we could just do research update videos for the next 10 years if we wanted to <laughs> or more. <laughs> just a ton of studies that we could talk about. So that is the findings. That is a research update video for you guys. I hope you really enjoyed it. Uh, please like and share uh, and subscribe to this channel. Hit the notification bell uh, for when we drop more new videos. So we'll catch you next time. Deuces.